Hey everyone, Sam Green, Aquaid Solutions, here today at Oak Hill Country Club, up this week supporting the PGA Championship. Jeff Corkin and his staff have done an amazing job. Joined today by Andrew Green, golf course architect, and my brother. What's up, bud? Uh, you know, Andrew, a lot has been discussed this week. You've been on the Golf Channel, Jeff's been on the Golf Channel. You've each talked about, you talked about the course, the changes, Jeff talked about the agronomic side, but really, I mean, from the project itself and when it was started after the senior PGA and coming to this point now, I think we need to talk a little bit about the relationship between the architect and the superintendent and also the timeline that was here in order to get the job done. Yeah, I think it's mission critical that the architect and the superintendent are in lockstep working together through the entire project. Uh, here, you know, Cork and I were in constant communication uh, pretty much every day. Even if I wasn't on site, we were talking about where things were, where things were going. Leading up to the project, a lot of discussion, obviously working here in Rochester of making sure that we hit our construction milestones as well as the grassing dates. And so often, you know, a good example is, you know, these critical grassing dates here was making sure we got all the sod down on the greens by the middle of October. Uh, you know, that's where all project planning really revolves. So I tell superintendents all the time, tell me your grassing window, and then we're going to do everything working backwards from that. And then, uh, you know, out in the field, having the superintendent and his team involved in every little detail makes the project better. And I, I love to say, you know, tell me of an issue, tell me of a problem, tell me of something you see while it's happening, while the project's ongoing versus at the end. If you see something you have a question about, always ask the question because it's much easier to address anything you need to handle when it's happening. You know, going back and redoing things is costly, not only from a dollar standpoint, but also uh, time. Uh, one of my favorite things to do with the superintendent and his team is when we shape a green, especially the first green, is gather everybody out there and talk about, okay, this is where I envision the putting surface. This is where I envision you know, the outside. Now, tell me how many cuts of grass do you think we need to have from here to here? Are we going to have a collar? Is the collar inside the cavity, outside the cavity? What grass is each height of cut? And then how much room do you need to turn a mower? Uh, how much room do you need to spray? Are you going to spray hawk? Are you going to put a, a riding unit on? How big is that sprayer? All of those conversations help create a product that's not only really cool and amazing, but also functional. So, you know, here this week, obviously, the extreme, some of the bunkers and whatnot that were put in back to the raw standards, you know, this being set up, number one, the history behind the club, and also then knowing they would host major championships now and into the future. So, but from, let's say, a project that isn't looking at the major piece of the puzzle, right? So from the architect and the superintendent standpoint, I know the schedule and everything stays the same, but from the aspect of making sure the, the design and the end product fits to where the expectation of the club and the budget of the club, talk a little bit about that. Sure. So another question I try to lead with in any kind of interview process is, you know, how many guys do you have on staff? Uh, what's full-time, part-time, how is your labor made up? It helps paint a picture of what is possible, uh, what seems to be you know, within reason, where are there places to have conversations just around manpower. Uh, so many of the things we're doing here at Oak Hill involve a lot of manpower. Certainly the bunkers are very ag aggressive and bold and they take work, you know? So that's part of the equation. Uh, thinking that through not only construction costs, but carrying costs is always a consideration. It should be a conversation as a superintendent you're comfortable asking the architect about. And at the end of the day, everyone involved in the project should have this one belief. And that is, if we can't all succeed at the end of the day when it's done and people are playing golf, then it's pointless. Like, why are, why are we doing this? So find the best way to blend the architectural merits of a project the vision of the client, whether it be the public, private, whatever, and then how do you keep it to be functional and sustainable? 
So 170 people here working together this week. That includes Jeff's staff and the volunteers from around the world. A lot of young people here that are in the business starting, working their way through the ranks. You know, with what you see out there, what's a good piece of advice you can give, you know, the young guys and girls coming along that are, you know, aspiring to be golf course superintendent, major championship, everything in the future with where we are. Yeah. I think any opportunity you have that you can go volunteer and be part of one of these events, even if it's a, a state championship, amateur event, anything where you can go and see what other people are doing is huge. It just opens your eyes. You know, for me, it was raking bunkers for you in 95, uh, the senior open, and just seeing how amazing uh, that setup was. I mean, the, the amount of people, the skill from all over the world, you know, that opened my, my mind from, you know, growing up in Western Virginia. Uh, and then it's meeting people. And this business is so much about networking and knowing people and building relationships and building trust. And, you know, if someone asks you, says, hey, do you, you know someone that could help me? And that you've made that connection. And all of a sudden, you know, I met this, this person, you know, at Oak Hill or wherever. I really think it's someone you should talk to. That stuff goes a huge, long ways in your professional development. You know, going into COVID, golf was somewhat on an uneasy path. Who would have ever thought a worldwide pandemic would have brought golf back out to the forefront, kind of across the board. You know, I know from a construction aspect and what we see going into the future, not only from my side of the business as a manufacturer and, and a vendor, but with you and that architecture piece, knowing what's coming from a renovation side, um, you know, there's a lot of positives coming out of the golf business for that young person here in the next five to ten years, right? Absolutely. And I really think if you love being outside, if you love being part of something that you can see the results of your work, which I feel is a huge thing in this, this generation of young folks, this is the industry for you. You can go to work every morning, and when you leave at the end of the day, you can see the work that you've done. You can see the results. And the cool thing about what we do is we are really bringing a level of joy. I mean, sometimes I'm bringing pain, but we're trying to bring joy uh, to the player, you know, and it's, uh, it's a cool business to be in and uh, very rewarding because of that. Hey, appreciate you sitting down with us. It's been a surreal week. Crazy. Come a long way. Oh. Come a long way. <laughs> so thanks a lot, Andrew. And, uh, Best of luck to Jeff and the crew here to get through the weekend. And I think everyone's going to enjoy a great championship. Appreciate it. Thanks, Bob.